Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, find duplicate subtrees. We're given the root of a binary tree and we want to just return every duplicate subtree. For example, we have these two that are duplicates. We know they're duplicates because they have the exact same structure. It's a node with a left child. The other uh, subtree has the same exact structure. And then when you take a look at the actual values in the structures, they both have a root of two. Even though these are subtrees, I'm still gonna call these the roots of the subtrees. And then they have a left child that has a value of four. They're both the exact same. So they're duplicate subtrees. Now you might think if these are duplicate subtrees, aren't there like childs also duplicate subtrees? Like these two fours, you could say in our tree here, we actually have multiple four nodes since they're the same like structure. It's just a leaf node and the values are the same. Each of them has a value of four. It actually shows up three times in this tree. Yes, those are also duplicate subtrees. So in this case, we have a couple duplicate subtrees. One is the tree with two four and then the other is just the four node so you can see that it matches their output down here so how can we actually identify these duplicate subtrees to find duplicates we know that like looking at this root node we'd probably want to compare a subtree from the left side and a subtree from the right side that's possible and there definitely is a similar elite code problem to this one but in this case, that's actually gonna get really complicated because we're not just checking like if these two subtrees are the same, we're gonna have to check if this subtree is the same as this one, or maybe it's the same as this one, or maybe this one. We'll have to compare every subtree from here with every subtree from here. And we'll have to do that recursively, meaning we'll have to check every subtree here and compare it with every subtree here. That's gonna get pretty complicated. How many subtrees are there? Well, there's N nodes, so let's say there's N subtrees. Comparing each subtree with every other subtree is gonna give us N squared pairs of subtrees. If we do it a really brute force way, where for every single subtree, we have to like go through every node in that subtree, that's also gonna be an O of N operation. That would get us to N cubed if you code it up like in the worst possible way recursively. But there's a simpler way can't we just, the same way they kind of serialize their trees, like in this way, where they put like one, two, three, maybe null, null, etc. Can we just take our tree and maybe every subtree and serialize it in a way that it can be represented with a text or a string? And then we can compare the strings a bit more easily. This is the approach I'm gonna go with. I think it's the simplest. So what we're gonna do here is exactly that for every subtree. Let's say we do find a way to convert it into a string. We'll talk about how in just a minute, but for now, let's assume that we do have a way and it's not ambiguous. So then we're gonna do exactly that recursively for this tree. So let's say we want to serialize the entire tree. Well, for that, we'd have to serialize the left half and the right half and then put them together. Let's say we do it in a pre-order way. I think any of the three ways would work though, pre-order, in-order, or post-order, but I'm just gonna do pre-order, just might as well. And as we do this, as for every single subtree, like this node, this node, this node, and these two nodes, these two nodes, maybe these two nodes, this entire tree, and the entire tree itself, for every single subtree, how do we know if there was a duplicate? Well, the easiest way would be with our handy dandy data structure, the hash map. For every single subtree, we're gonna serialize it into some string S, and then we're gonna map that to a list of all of the trees that match that serialization. So if this list just has a single element in it, that means there's just a single tree with this serialization. But if there's multiple, there's two of them, there's duplicates, then we know that there are duplicates of this serialization. And what we're actually gonna add to this list in our hash map is going to be the root node of the subtree, because that's actually what they want us to return. We, we're not gonna return the actual serialization of the tree, we're gonna return the root node of the duplicate trees. So once we have that with our hash map, it'll be easy to return all the trees that have duplicates. 
So now how do we actually serialize a tree? Well, it's not super complicated, but it's also not quite as simple as you might think, depending on what you think. So maybe we have a tree like this, one, two, three. What would be the pre-order traversal of this tree? Well, we'd start at the root, visit the root, so then we'd have a one. Then we go left, we visit the root, it's two. So let's add two to our output and say this has been visited and there's nothing left to visit here now. So now let's go back up to the root and then go to the right side of the tree. Now let's run DFS here. Well, visit this guy. Now let's run pre-order here. So visit this guy. It's a three, so this is our output. There's no more nodes left to visit. So this was our pre-order traversal of this tree. Now, let's say that this is our serialization. One, two, three, maybe some commas as delimiters. Delimiters are pretty important because without them, then this would just look like one, two, three. How do I know that these are like different values? Maybe we had a single node, which is a 12, and then we had a right node, which is a three. That's why we need commas or some kind of delimiter, like a space that separates these values. But even then, is this good enough? Does this uniquely identify this subtree? Not quite. Let me show you why. If I have a tree like this, one, two, three, and I run pre-order traversal here, I'm going to start at the root, visit the root, I get a one, then I'm going to go to the left subtree, there's nothing there, so then I'm going to go to the right subtree, visit it, I have a two, I can't go left, so then I'm going to go right, I'm going to visit this, it's a three. Notice how these two trees, they're different subtrees, but they have the same serialization. The problem is we only cared about the values in this case, even though we visited them in a consistent order in terms of like pre-order, we got the same serialization because we ignored the null values. So let's try that again, actually including the null values. I'm gonna call them just N for short. Start at the root here. We have a one, we're doing pre-order. Then we're gonna go left. We have a two, add the two. Then we're gonna go left here. It's a null, so add N for null. Then we're gonna try going right add n because there's nothing there. Then we're gonna pop back up and then try going down to the right subtree. So add three. Now we've visited it and then go to its left subtree, nothing there, and go to its right subtree, nothing there, and so this is the actual serialization of this tree. This gives us a more complete picture because assuming we're doing pre-order traversal, we know the first one is gonna be the root. Next, we're gonna get the left child. And then for that node, we're gonna get its left and right children. Since they're null, we know we can't really go any further. And then we'll have three for the right side and then a couple nulls to show that we can't go any further than that. Serializing this tree, we get a one in the root. We get a null because it doesn't have a left child. Then we get a two for the right child over here. Then we get another null because it doesn't have a left child. And then we get a three visiting this. And then we get two nulls. I'm kind of running out of space, so I'll just put them over here. But clearly we can see that this serialization is different from this one. It was different actually from the second node. The second node was null for this tree, but it was two for this tree. So that is going to disambiguate things for us. By adding the null values, we make sure that there won't be any ambiguities. So this will correctly identify the duplicates for us. And before we code it up, let's quickly go over the time complexity. Since for every subtree, we are building this like serialization. It's not gonna be too bad, but the length of the serialization could be N, where N is like the size of the entire input tree which is not super efficient. And just even checking if this is inside of like a hash map is not gonna be O of one because the length of the string has to be hashed to check if it's a key in a hash map. So actually the overall time complexity for this, we know we have N trees and for each tree, we have to build like the string and then to use the string, we have to hash it. That's an O of N time operation. So we get N times n, which gives us n squared as the overall time complexity. So now let's code it up. So remember, we're going to have our pre-order traversal, which is just going to be a basic DFS. It could be in order or it could be post order. It doesn't matter too much. And usually with these, the base case is if not node, then return. In this case, though, we're not just going to be returning nothing. We're going to return a string. Let's do null 
Though you could do something else like maybe a hash character or something else if you wanted to. I'm just going to do this because it makes it pretty obvious. And before we get further, I'm actually going to define that hash map we were talking about. I'm going to call it subtrees. I'm going to initialize it as a default dict in Python, giving it a value of list. That means if we try to key this, like if I try to say subtrees of some value like S, I'm going to maybe add to it one or something like that. This won't give us an invalid key error, even if the S doesn't exist in our hash map. That's why I'm doing this. This is just kind of a shortcut you can take with Python. So now going back to our pre-order, we know we want to use the nodes value that we're currently at. And then we want to call DFS on the left subtree. And then we want to call DFS on the right subtree. But using all of these, we just want to concatenate them together. We know this DFS, naturally, these are not DFS, they're pre-order, but I'm actually going to rename our pre-order function to DFS because a shorter name here is going to make this a bit more readable. But we know that this DFS, this pre-order is going to return a string, which is the serialization of this subtree. And we know with all these serializations, well, this node is a value, but we want to convert it into a string, not a number. So let's do that. We want to, though, with all three of these, concatenate them together. That's what we're trying to do. So we could add them together like this. But we know we also have to put like a delimiter in between them, which we're going to use a comma. So a little bit more cleaner way to do this is to actually put all three of these into an array. So just like this, let's change these pluses to commas. So now it's in an array. And then we can take all these strings and then just join them together with a delimiter. So our delimiter is going to be the comma. And then we're going to join them all together. You can do it like this in Python. So this is a string and string objects in Python have a join method, which allows them to be used as delimiters and join an array of strings together. That's what we're doing here. And once we do that, we have our resulting string, which I'm going to call S. It's the serialization of this subtree. Using that serialization, we want to check maybe there already exists a subtree with that serialization. So what I'm going to say is with our hash map subtrees, I'm going to use this string as the key and I'm going to get the length of this. So if we've never used this as a key in our hash map before, this is going to give us zero. But if we have and we've inserted exactly one into it, then that means we found a duplicate subtree. The reason I'm not saying it's greater than or equal to one is because then we would end up possibly adding multiple copies of this, but we only want to make sure we add exactly one if there's a duplicate. So that's what we're going to do here. We're going to append to our result, which I haven't even defined actually. So before I do that, let me go ahead and define it down here. We're going to run DFS on the root tree that we're passing in. So run DFS on the root. But before we do that, let's define a result, which is going to be a list in this case, a list of all the duplicate subtrees. And that's what we're ultimately going to return after our DFS runs. We're going to return that list of duplicate subtrees. So now let's build it in our DFS here. If we ever find a duplicate, make sure to add the root of that duplicate, which is node in this case, the node that was passed into our DFS, add that to the result if we find a duplicate. But regardless of whether it's a duplicate or not, we want to append it to the list in our hash map corresponding to that serialization. So we're going to append the node for this serialization. This serialization is mapped to a list of nodes aka a list of subtrees. After that, all we want to do is return the serialization itself so that maybe it can be used by the parent node. And other than that, now let's run this code to make sure that it works. And as you can see, yes, it does. And it's pretty efficient. If this was helpful, please like and subscribe. If you're preparing for coding interviews, check out neatcode.io. It's got a ton of free resources to help you prepare. Thanks for watching and hopefully I'll see you pretty soon.